Hi, I'm Brian Moran, founder of Government CIO. Welcome to Government CIO Magazine. Hi, welcome to Government CIO Magazine. I'm Tiffany Barrett, and we're sitting down today with Mr. Mike Krieger, Army Deputy CIO G6. So that's actually easy, right? The biggest thing for us is enterprise. So we're on a path to migrate 1.4 million Army users from a local ex Microsoft Exchange service to an enterprise service in the DoD private cloud by DISA. So that's absolutely had the biggest effect on the Army network. Now, let's, let's talk about that for a minute, though. It, two things. It's about enterprise email, which is changing from a local service to an enterprise service. But more importantly, it's about identity management. Because what DISA did as part of the enterprise email was they established a global address list with all 3.9 million CAC PKI cardholders. So for the first time ever, my global address list has all 3.9 million people that have CAC cards. So that's huge. And that'll be the same global address list for unified communications. It'll be the same global address list for enterprise collaboration suite. So the real paradigm shift is at any management, any management service and global address list. One of the initial outcomes is using it for enterprise email. So that one really is easy. That one's enterprise email for us. And the project was to migrate 1.6 million users, both unclassified and classified, to a local post camp and station Microsoft Exchange service to a Microsoft Exchange service and a DoD private cloud hosted by DISA. That's, uh, it's really two things. Besides email, which is pretty significant, it's also um, enterprise directory services. So I now have a global address list with 3.9 million people. So anybody in the Department of Defense that has a PKR cap card is in my global address list. That's huge. That, that really is. It's a, it's a game changer. But, but it also did a lot of things. Migrating to the enterprise forced us to uh, really do enterprise net ops, service management, change management, configuration management, all things that we were weak on as an RMA, and you could overlook it when your service was provided local. But when you act like an enterprise, you've actually got to change your enterprise business processes. And so the most significant thing for the RMA is you got an email that's more operationally effective, more secure, and cheaper. We've got much better business processes now. And I've got a global address look that's DOD wide. And that, that's all huge. So, so now I'm going to say the other thing. And enterprise email is the pacing item for us. But it's changing from an army that everything was decentralized done locally to now there's some things you ought to do centralized to save money, to be more secure, and, and, and uh, to be more operationally effective. So we're transitioning from a design, build, operate way of thinking to a now I've got to define the service I want, work out the service level agreements of what I want and make sure the business process is supported. That's a paradigm shift for the Army. It's been a paradigm shift for DISA, but it's been a superb partnership, and we've made tremendous progress. Well, what we've learned in the Army is it starts with a cost-benefit analysis. So you've Got to do the analysis to say, why is this going to be more effective? Why is this going to be more secure? What is the cost of doing it? Is it cheaper or more expensive? And then you've got to establish stable funding. So, for instance, before enterprise email, if you had asked me what the cost of email is in the Army, I couldn't have told you. And for the cost-benefit analysis, we had to do a lot of work with the, the Army Audit Agency to try to figure out what the status quo cost was. But it wasn't captured anywhere in the budget. Now, we've got one funding line in the budget for enterprise email. And so I've got transparency in funding now, and I can make sure the funding is stable and that for what we fund it to, we get the service that we want. So I can now match funding to capability delivered. Couldn't do that before. And so th that's a big shift. And so what we found is for IT, the cost-benefit analysis is the key. It makes you do your analysis of alternatives. It makes you do the analysis of the different options. And then it makes you do, figure out what the costing is going to be and then what the benefits are. And it, it's huge for us. So, so again, I'm going to use enterprise emails, but the forcing function. 
and it's really establishing a different battle rhythm. So we've got a battle rhythm now with the key players up our chain and horizontally across. And, and you've got senior leaders supporting the battle rhythm. And so in the Army, what Enterprise Email's done is we've got Secretary of the Army engaged, we've got the under engaged, we've got the Chief involved, we've got the Vice involved, and you get all the senior leaders across the staff. We're, we're engaged with the Hill, as you can see in the press, we're engaged with DOD, and we're engaged with the other military departments. That's a game changer, but it's a different way of doing business, it's a good way of doing business. And, and we've got good leadership support across the Army. The, the other thing is that we're, we've got this task in the Secretary of the Army to look at IT efficiencies, we're looking at governance boards. So, so the other thing Enterprise Email has done for us is look at how the decisions are made and, and improve the governance boards for IT investments in the Army. And, and that's, that's really important. And then the last one is, it, and it's what, it hasn't always been our strength, but we've got to have a battle rhythm for stratcoms. So we've got to constantly get the word out, this is what we're doing, this is why we're doing it. And so one of the things I think most visible in the industry is we have this list in the Army called the 53 list, which is a list server for both Army folks and former Army folks and industry folks they can all sign up for and they get to talk about what we're doing in IT and they can complain and say things are good or ask questions. And, and I monitor it and I go on it once in a while. And so I can get the word out through all the IT guys through the blog, through that 53 list. But the other way is now I've got this blog that we do that seems to be effective in explaining our story to industry and, 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 and the non-DOD community. It seems to be getting read and saying, here's why we're doing things. And at least it levels the playing field that we can explain the why behind what we're doing. So if you go to the Army page, the Army homepage, you can see that the Army's on it all, right? So the Army's got a Facebook presence and a YouTube presence and a Twitter presence and, and a Flickr presence, and all that's good. I think the Army public affairs folks are really making effective use of the chief staff. The Army's got a blog. I'm seeing as being fairly well read and, and good response. But look inside the Army, we had a PESC through T develop what we call the Mill Suite, which is the same tools but now confined to DOD. And so we have a Mill Tube, which is videos within DOD. We have a Mill Book, which is the Facebook side. Uh, we have the Mill Blog, which is the blog side. So what we're finding is that those tools are really effective if you, if you control who can see them. And then we're trying to leverage them outwardly facing. So we're actually using the new tools inwardly facing and outwardly facing, just to improve collaboration in both directions. So, so increased competition is good, which is what commoditization leads you to. It's also an opportunity for us to focus higher up in the stack. So, so if hardware is a commodity, then you don't worry about hardware anymore. If, soft, if operating systems become a commodity, you don't worry about operating systems. So from where I sit, it's all good, because what we really need to focus on is applications and data. And so that's allowing us to. We've, we've had a lot of whiteboard sessions saying the bottom of the stack is a commodity. So the initiative you see coming out of the Army right now between CIG6 and our acquisition executive is this common operating environment, where what we've really done is define six computing environments. And the computing environments are examples of the commoditization. So now we're saying, here's a community computing environment for a TOC, for a tactical operations center. And we're, and we're saying, this is the hardware you use, this is the operating system you use, these are the basic services you use, and the security you use. And then the application guys are constrained by that environment, and they can focus on the application. So I think the computing environment strategy and architecture for the Army represents us leveraging this commoditization of the lower levels of stack. So I think it, it, you have to start at the fundamentals, and so that's what you've been hearing me to say today. What Enterprise Email showed us, number one, is uh, we didn't have control of the Enterprise Network in the Army initially. We didn't control the desktop. We didn't control the top level architecture stacks. We didn't control the firewall settings. Everything in the Army used to be local, and that was okay when all your services were provided local. But when you start behaving like an enterprise, you've got to have some standardization, you've got to, and you've got to have some compliance to standardization. So, there's nothing new here, but email has forced us to be a more disciplined force from an IT perspective, and we now have a, we now control the desktop, we now control the firewalls, and, and everything's working much better. 
The other thing you've got to do is name management. So now we've got a single identity, so no matter what application I use, it's a single identity, and then we're using two-factor authentication. The, the other thing is we didn't have visibility of what's on the network before, but, but we've recently put a, uh, a really an XML-based system, an XML data place, a database in place that will allow us to see all the hardware and software on the network and will now allow us, when there's a threat, to develop a widget really quickly and go after that threat. So the other thing that you've got to do is have transparency of what's connected to the network, which, which we never had before. Uh, I think where we need to go for the innovations are to start virtualizing some of these top-level architecture stacks. So we've got to virtualize switches, we've got to virtualize routers, we've got to virtualize firewalls so that in near real time we can reconfigure the network based on the threat. But it still starts with the fundamentals, which is what we're probably learning over again. So, so let's start just basic stuff. And again, it's something the Army's relearning, and the Navy's already learned. So as part of data center consolidation, which is a federal effort, we're finally doing application rationalization, which is long overdue. And that's just a basic. There's nothing sexy about it. Right, right now we're in the process of asking our functional leads to bin it as either modernize, virtualize, and move it to an in-state data center. Kill it, my favorite option, right, of which, which our CBA says you had hit 30%. Or if it's a legacy thing and you can't kill it, pay more money to firewall it until you can replace it. That's just good, basic IT portfolio management, but we're finally doing it. I mean, the, the OMB direction to do that was probably a wonderful thing. The, the second thing, though, where, where the new stuff comes in is it, it's secure mobile. Can we get to a point where I can use my personal mobile device and I can do personal thing on it, government thing on it, and I can have my single identity and I can do two-factor authentication and we can do it securely. And, and I think that's the biggest change we're going to see in 12. I, I think we're going to grapple with that and make some success. So, so the way I would take it, the, the real game changer that follows enterprise email is two, two things. So the next thing is enterprise collaboration, which is this mill suite we are talking about and the collaborative tools we use. We're, we're doing the same thing as email. We're going to take it off post campus station, put it in the DISA, DOD, private cloud, for, for the same reasons. More, more effective, more secure, and, and probably save money. But the next thing really is unified communications. And by that I mean, the, the presence and awareness, which in the DOD, the standards XMPP, the voice and video that you can do at your computer desk so you can see the person and, and talk to them. And, and, and all that's, that's by the SIP standards, so that's interoperable. And then the third one is the share on my desktop, which is no standards right now, so it's proprietary. But the, the, the other four capabilities have standards. The, uh, the Army is, is looking real closely at how rapidly we can move that out and shut down legacy TDM switches and have a hybrid environment where TDM switches where you need it for like 911 calls or some redundancy at C2 centers, but otherwise put this unified uh, collaboration capability in place. The, the problem with this right now is we've provided it to the deployed soldiers for a couple of years now, and it's in the tactical equipment, but when they come to home station, we don't have it. And it really is a game changer. It's, it, it, it makes you much more effective. It's, it'll be cheaper in the end once you do the initial investment. And it'll give the soldiers the same thing at home station that they have when they deploy in the field. And so that's a primary thing. You know, email again opens the door. You really want to get to unified.